Hi everyone, it's Sean here from TurboSource. I will be walking you through part 4 of our TurboKit install video. This overview will cover the removal of the throttle body, intake manifold, and old PCV system. It will also include the installation of the TurboSource crankcase vent system, plug and play 3 bar map sensor, BOV vacuum line, reinstallation of the intake manifold and the throttle body with the TurboSource throttle body spacer. The tools that are needed are the following, side cutters of your choice, adjustable pliers, a flathead screwdriver, a T25 Torx bit, a quarter inch drive, a short and long quarter inch extensions, a quarter inch ratchet, a short and long quarter inch 10 millimeter sockets, a short and long quarter inch 8 millimeter sockets. Throttle body removal. First unplug the electrical connector on the drive-by-wire throttle body. Use the quarter inch ratchet with an extension of your choice along with a quarter inch long or short 8 millimeter socket to remove the four bolts that secure the throttle body to the intake manifold. Once all four bolts are removed, you will be able to set the throttle body off to the side for later. Intake manifold removal. Disconnect the engine harness that is going to the ECU located on the driver's side of the engine. The connector closest to the firewall is the only one that has to be disconnected. Then use a flathead screwdriver to pop out the plastic electrical wire holders from the ECU mount. This will allow you to move the engine harness towards the front of the car to give you more access to hard to reach plastic electrical wire holders and intake manifold bolts. There is a total of seven plastic electrical wire holders on the intake manifold that need to be popped out or cut depending on whatever you feel is easier. A flathead screwdriver was used to remove the plastic electrical wire holder closest to the throttle body inlet on the intake manifold. Take the plastic cover off the top of the engine. This pops up by grabbing each side and lifting up. Then disconnect the two wire electrical connector that is under this cover. Take the flathead screwdriver and pop out the two plastic electrical wire holders that are on top of the intake manifold. You will also use a quarter inch ratchet with an extension of your choice with a long or short 10 millimeter quarter inch socket to remove the two M6 bolts from the top of the intake manifold. Take the adjustable pliers and remove the clamp and vacuum hose off the center of the intake manifold and the brake booster vacuum line from the firewall. There is a total of six M8 bolts holding the intake manifold to the head of the engine. The five shown in this picture are relatively easy to access, but we will go into more detail on where and how to remove the six bolt. Take a quarter inch ratchet and a long extension with a long or short 10 millimeter socket and remove all five bolts. A magnet will make it easier to remove them completely or just leave them in until the manifold is pulled out. Removal of the sixth intake manifold bolt is by far the most difficult part of the entire installation process for the entire turbo kit. First, you are going to reach up from under the car and pull down on the wiring harness to pop out the plastic electrical wire holder from the intake manifold and pull the wires down to give room to access the last intake manifold bolt. Use the quarter inch ratchet with a short extension and a long 10 millimeter quarter inch socket to remove this bolt. It was hard to film this process, but it's best to reach down with your right arm from the front of the car to give yourself the right angle to loosen the bolts up. Now the intake manifold bolts are removed, we can start the process of taking out of the car. Note, there is still three more plastic electrical wire holders attached to the intake manifold that need to be removed. You will push the ignition wiring harness towards the head of the engine to allow you to start to lift the intake manifold from the engine bay. As you lift, you will pull towards the driver's side slightly to remove the intake manifold from the engine bay. As you are lifting the intake manifold out of the engine bay, the first wire holder that needs to be removed is located here. Due to the angle that is given on this wire holder, it's best to use your choice of side cutters to cut this wire holder. Note, be careful not to cut the engine harness in any way. As you continue lifting the intake manifold out of the engine bay, there are four more items all in the same area that need to be disconnected. There is two 
plastic electrical wire holders that can either be cut off with the side cutters or pulled off, whatever you find easier. The PCV system hose will just slide off. You may need to use a flathead screwdriver to push it off. Lastly, the stock map sensor electrical connector needs to be disconnected from the stock map sensor. Once these last four items are disconnected, you should be able to remove the intake manifold from the engine bay. Now the intake manifold is removed, it gives you access to remove the stock PCV system to install the TurboSource crankcase vent system. Use the quarter inch ratchet with an extension of your choice and a long or short 8mm quarter inch socket to remove the M6 bolts from the PCV system. Once all 6 bolts are removed, you can remove the PCV system. Now the OEM PCV system is removed, you can now install the TurboSource crankcase vent system plate. Reinstall the 6 M6 bolts that were previously removed on the OEM PCV system with a quarter inch ratchet with an extension of your choice with a long or short 8mm quarter inch socket. Install the half inch diameter crankcase vent line that is 23 inches long onto the half inch fitting on the TurboSource crankcase vent system. Before reinstalling the intake manifold, the TurboSource 3 bar TMAP sensor and BOV vacuum line needs to be installed onto the intake manifold. Take a T25 Torx bit to remove the OEM MAP sensor from the intake manifold. Then install the TurboSource 3 bar TMAP sensor and retighten the T25 Torx bit screw. Connect the TurboSource plug and play harness onto the TMAP sensor. The BorgWarner EFR turbocharger has a built-in BOV, blow-off valve, and the stock intake system really does not have any post-throttle body intake manifold nipples. So, the old PCV connection is being repurposed for the BOV to receive vacuum when the throttle body is closed. Slip the 2 inch, 3 8 inch rubber hose over the PCV nipple on the intake manifold along with the two supplied shielded clamps. Use the quarter inch drive and an 8 millimeter long or short quarter inch socket to tighten the clamps. Now that everything is installed onto the intake manifold, it will need to be installed back into the vehicle. First take the MAP sensor harness and plug it into the stock MAP sensor connection location. Next, if you have the TurboSource crankcase vent system, route the vent hose through the same path that the BOV uses. This tube will need to be routed through the intake as you install the intake manifold onto the engine. Once you have the manifold seated onto the engine, make sure to check the crankcase vent tube and the BOV tubing to make sure neither of these items are kinked in any way. Install the top five intake manifold bolts. Use a quarter inch ratchet with a 10 millimeter long socket and an extension of your choice. It will be your choice if you'd like to install a sixth intake manifold bolt. This bolt location on the bottom of the intake manifold is relatively hard to reach. We did leave this bolt uninstalled on the shop car and experienced no issues. Next, take the quarter inch ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket and an extension of your choice to reinstall the purge valve and the fuel line back onto the intake manifold with the M6 bolts. Take the adjustable pliers and reconnect the purge valve line and the brake booster lines. Reinstall the intake cover lid. For users that have purchased the TurboSource crankcase vent system, please remove the OEM rubber hose from the valve cover with an adjustable pliers, and then install the plastic T-piece onto the half-inch rubber line that was routed through the intake manifold. 
there is an additional 11 inch 3 8 inch rubber hose that connects back onto the valve cover and connects onto the plastic T. Reconnect the engine harness onto the ECU bracket. Then reconnect the engine harness connector back onto the ECU. For users that have the TurboSource crankcase vent system, connect the 5 8 rubber hose to the open end on the plastic T and route it under the front chassis brace towards the passenger side of the car. The TurboSource throttle body spacer will be installed next. It has four bolts that secure it to the intake manifold. Use a number 5 Allen head to tighten the bolts. Lastly, you will install the OEM drive-by wire throttle body onto the TurboSource throttle body spacer. Make sure that the spacer has the rubber o-ring installed onto it. Use a quarter inch ratchet with an 8mm long socket to tighten the four M6 bolts that secure the throttle body onto the throttle body spacer. Then reconnect the engine harness for the drive-by wire throttle body. That wraps up part 4 of the TurboSource BorgWarner EFR ND Miata Turbo Kit install video. Part 5 will include the installation of the TurboSource Turbo Manifold, EFR Turbocharger, Downpipe, Turbo Oil and Coolant, Feed and Return, Intercooler Piping, and finally the Turbo Inlet Ducting. I hope you enjoyed this instructional video.